Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Skull and Bones and we're going to be going over something that has been bothering me quite a bit in this game for a couple days here now. So if you haven't already completed all of the main contracts and gotten to the end or at least got far enough to open up the helm, you may not be familiar with it. But if you are, uh, you'll be familiar with the system that they have in place in this game of two different currencies. That being, or I should say multiple currencies, but two main ones. That being silver for what you'll use for most things or at least for the first uh, two thirds of the game game, and then of course pieces of eight, which are the exclusive currency of the black market, which is the rewards for doing helm missions. So if you've opened up the helm, you're probably pretty familiar with them. And I did a video showing how you earn these through the helm. It's a relatively straightforward process. That being said, it feels like the entire system is specifically designed to be as much of a pain in the ass as possible. And the reason for this, as someone who's played enough games to recognize this type of thing, is that they didn't have a plan for the end game in this. So the multiplayer content in this game is rather limited, the story only goes so far, and the side missions are fine. Most most of the side content is not nearly as entertaining as the main missions are, so once you've done a couple dozen of them, you kind of don't really want to do anymore. It's more fun to just sail around and destroy ships, so it's not nearly as fun to do these little piddly missions where you're looking for a treasure map or you're looking for a, a specific thing from this specific faction. I'm not saying don't do them, and obviously that there are specific rewards like cosmetic items and stuff that you can only get through doing certain contracts. So I'm not saying don't do the side content, I'm just saying the average person won't be that interested. So they added the helm in and they put a bunch of the stuff in the game, like a lot of the best stuff you can possibly get including clothing options, uh, cosmetics for your ships, specific schematics for all of the best ships, weapons, all that sort of stuff, and certain items like the Black Prince which is, well, arguably the best armor. There's one that gives you a better total armor value but it doesn't have the same perks. Uh, but that you can't even get a schematic for. You have to specifically purchase it, not even with pieces of eight. You have to purchase this with, I think these are called sovereigns, but I'm not sure, but it's the currency that you get for collecting pieces of eight. So it's another level of currency. So they want you to grind out all of your time in the game gathering these pieces of eight. Now, it's not just as straightforward as that, because like I said, we'll get into it. This system was specifically designed to be as much of a pain in the ass as possible. This isn't a empire building end of game system where as you put more time and effort into it, it gets easier and more efficient. It only gets more time consuming, more micromanagey and everything the further you get into it. There's never a point where it actually starts to make sense that you're this kingpin running this operation because you have to do every single step manually. And uh, let me just walk you through that. And so from your smuggler's hideout, you will be basically running all of your helm operation. The first place that you'll really do a whole lot of anything is your distillery. This is where you'll turn raw materials into liquor or whatever. In this case, it's it's uh, rum. So you're, we're turning sugar cane into rum. But uh, that's kind of the first step. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm on board with you. We're making this and that I will be able to profit from. Well, it's not an automatic thing. The only way to profit from that is to go into your order registry and you have to specifically look and wait for missions where you can take this somewhere and sell it. And so you can see you have four missions open at a time. Uh, the only good thing about this is, almost always, they're all at the same location. So if you're smart, you just make sure you have enough White Skull Rum and enough uh, opium in your storage, and then you just accept all four of these missions at once and complete them all at once. So that's the only good thing that I found about the convenience for the helm, is that for uh, these missions, they'll oftentimes all be at the same location. So you can, you know, don't do them one at a time, just do them all at once. So that's the only good thing. Other than that, everything else is just wildly inconvenient. And you'll realize that once you get introduced to the Helm Empire overview. Uh, this is the system where you can build your empire and become a kingpin and all that sort of stuff. It's supposed to be the system, or at least in most games, this is the type of system that would be uh, one that it starts out slow, but as you put more time and effort into it, it gets to a point where it's this passive income generation, minimal input, all you have to do, is sometimes maybe you go protect these places or something like that but it's it's just that then you automatically get your money that is not the case here so when you're running this empire you can see I need to go on a collection run for mine um you have to do so many things so for one thing all of these locations that you'll take will start on a low level so you have to level them up that makes sense right that's a normal system for end of game but this the only way to level these up is by using your pieces of eight so you're stuck with the choice and now I don't think it's much of a choice because tactically I'd rather improve my capital than take my smaller immediate gains but anyway you have to spend them to upgrade these locations and when you upgrade them you do increase their production a little bit but the big thing you improve is their uh, capacity so how much pieces of eight they can store at level four that's 110 so 
Uh, you want to do that because you have to physically sail around to each of these locations and collect the coins. And it's not like it's no big deal. You have to go to them. You can't fast travel with them. You can't fast travel to them. So you actually have to get in your ship, sail around to each location, collect them all. It's not like they're in a straight line, right? So it takes a long time to do that. The whole time you're doing that, you're getting hunted by pirate uh, rogues. And unlike the missions where you deliver rum or opium, uh, these ships that hunt you down, and are annoying about it don't even carry any loot so you have to destroy them otherwise they'll just keep bothering you and preventing you from collecting your coins which we'll get to in a second uh but destroying them just wastes your time and ammo because they don't carry anything for some reason they decided these ships were going to be entirely empty they don't even carry a little bit of silver and some ammo much less a bunch of money and resources and stuff like the other ones do so when you're going around to collect your coins you're just being annoyed the entire time so when you're doing this you mark a location fast travel to the closest one and that's where you're going to start your route because once you pick these up you can't fast travel so i'm just going to show you for posterity's sake what this process looks like i'm not going to go through the whole thing because it literally takes over an hour to sail around and collect all of these things just in this one location it's one of the reasons why i'm not planning on expanding my helm empire to the other regions it's already way too much of a pain in the ass to try and fund and manage all of these operations in this one section there's no way i could keep up with it financially in the game or time wise if i expand to the other section I'm sure they're more profitable, but it's a system that, like I said, it doesn't reward progression, it punishes it. The more advanced you get, instead of a real game where they would be like, oh, this is how we're going to instill wealth and power in this person who has completed the game and is has put the time and effort into it. We're going to make them feel like a kingpin. So they are just passively making money. They're reaping the benefits of other people's labor now because that's what a kingpin is. It's not someone who goes around and does all the works themselves. Uh, but here's, here's what we do. We have to sail all the way to each location. And it's not like you just pass by and you immediately collect them or you can do it on the run or anything like that. You have to sail all the way up to them. You have to interact with them. That brings your ship to a complete stop. Then you have to click collect profit. Once you do that, for one thing, annoyingly, what you just saw pop up on the screen, it'll give you this helm wager option. You can't choose when to do that. It will randomly pop up after you collect pieces of eight. Oftentimes, after the first couple of these and the helm wager is something that in theory could be fun because it's this race to a place where you can, if you get there, you're safe and you get twice the pieces of eight you had but if another player stops you they get your pieces of eight like i said that seems like a good system it adds a little bit of risk and a way to double your money so that's always exciting problem with it is is you don't get to choose when you do it it just randomly shows up as an opportunity you have absolutely no input at all so it'll oftentimes offer it to you after you've completed the first or whatever a couple or halfway through or whatnot and so it wants you to end your route and make it you know, even more inconvenient to try going around and collecting all your stuff for the possibility of losing it all. And you don't even get to do a mathematical equation based on, uh, you know, loss versus potential profit to do it when you can make the most. So the helm wager system is one that I pretty much never participate in. So you can see we just sunk one of those pirate ships I was talking about. Absolutely no loot drops from them. You have to destroy them because if you're engaged in combat or even being followed by an enemy, you can't interact with the cities or the locations to gather your gold. So if you get engaged in combat, you have to stop, defeat them, get out of combat. So if it's with a faction or whatever, lose your wanted level before you're even able to interact with the next city to get your gold. Like I said, it's such a slow and laborious manual micromanaged process it's so much more annoying than it is anything else like i said they they made it so every single step of this process was as annoying as physically possible i've already i, I was griping about this to my wife the other day while she was she was watching me play and wondering what i was doing and i said the only way they could have made the system any worse was if they made it so once you have this gold on your ship it automatically tells everyone on the map and it makes you vulnerable to pvp because that's that's literally the only thing i could think of that could possibly make the system a worse system for you know gaining money because everything else you have to you have to do it all manually there's there's no automation it takes so long and like i said the more you do instead of it being more profitable and easier the more difficult and time consuming it is to do and so i've showed you the basic process that's how you gather it's very slow very laborious can be interrupted in a million different ways really really inconvenient but that's not where the inconvenience of this system stops you also have to fund these manufactories and you do that with silver and it's actually not cheap so you can see that there's a time limit for which it is funded currently they have uh this one i'm the shijavu that i have funded is funded for an hour and 11 minutes that's not long enough to fill up the inventory 
inventory, so you'll have to fund it multiple times to fill up the inventory and get a full, you know, treasure run out of it. Uh, that can get really expensive, and so the problem with this system is you can't make a steady flow of pieces of eight on this because it takes so long to go around and collect all of these. It, like I said, literally over an hour just for one section, and there's a million different things that can go wrong and screw it up in that interval, and then you have to fund all these manufacturers to keep them going, so you have to earn silver because it actually eats up silver really quickly. I had just passively from completing the second part of the story and, you know, destroying a bunch of ships and everything, I had over 200,000 silver on my guy. And I did three or four runs of collecting pieces of eight and refunding the, you know, funding the manufacturers and all that sort of stuff. And without even noticing, I ate up the entire 200,000 silver in that process uh, and found myself in St. Anne completely out of money. So... It was shocking for me, but that's, it, it's deceptive, but it takes a lot of silver. So not only do you have to do this thing to collect pieces of eight that's incredibly time consuming, but you need to actually spend as much time trying to earn silver just so you can fund these manufacturers. Uh, like I said, it's just every step of the way, painfully laborious, slow, micromanaged nonsense. And so how do you fix this system? That's the point of this video. It's really easy to fix the system. The one major change that would fix it is make it so you don't have to physically go around and collect all the coins. I know that changes it and it would make it so it actually makes sense and so most game developers, especially for games like this, they don't want that. They want you to be busy running around doing, you know, basically paperwork at this level like this is this is not kingpin stuff this is entry level work would be collecting the funds for your manufacturers they want you physically doing it that's the stupidest part of this system you take that out you make it so once it is filled up you could just click on it on the map or maybe it automatically puts it into your chest if you did that every other problem with the system would automatically balance paying for the manufacturers with silver all that sort of stuff would be no big deal because you fill them up and it automatically goes into your chest back home so you are passively generating this income all you have to do is fund it with your silver. So what do you spend your time doing? You run around earning silver, the thing that's infinitely more fun in the game because you can go around destroying ships, the thing people want to do in a pirate game. Uh, and that way you're still, you have this kingpin empire, people are clearly working for you because they're supplying your money, they're producing the product for you, all that sort of stuff. So that is the easiest solution to this problem that makes the system turn from being a giant pain in the ass to being a pretty fun end game mechanic. Because like I said, then it's about empire management. And that's fun. Lots of games do that, and it's always fun. Black Flag had something like that, where you just gained the regular currency in the game, but, you know, you captured ships and you had them go on trade runs and stuff for you, and that could make you lots of money. Uh, that was a good system. It didn't require you to micromanage all those ships and to run around doing all the trade missions yourself. You could be a pirate. You could run around doing what you wanted. So that's the easiest way to fix the system. The other way is to change everything else. If they want you to go around collecting everything, that's simple. Don't require silver to fund these manufacturers. Make it so it's quicker and easier to collect them so you don't have to come to a full stop. Maybe if you come in the radius, it'll automatically deposit the, the pieces of eight into your inventory. Uh, if you have to have pirates automatically hunting you down to try and get your stuff, at least give them an inventory full of resources so it doesn't feel like you're just wasting time and ammunition and repair kits and everything to fight them. Uh, that's, that's your two options there. You either make it so you don't have to physically go deliver or, or collect all of the pieces of eight or you make it so it actually makes sense to do it because you're not constantly spending thousands and thousands of silver to keep these manufacturers running and you can spend your time doing this so it's one or the other you can't have both you can't be like you have to micromanage every step you have to pay for every step it will stop producing if you don't fund it ah uh, it can only hold so much like oh that's another one if they made it so it didn't have a cap so as long as you kept funding it it would just keep keep building up gold so you didn't have to only have a hundred pieces of eight it could have thousands in there then and doing a big laborious run around and collecting them all wouldn't be as much of a pain in the ass because you could go do one run and collect your whatever 20,000 pieces of eight that makes a lot more sense and is worth the silver because like I said then you still have the time to be profitably going around being a pirate destroying ships and then when you get to it you can get your pieces of eight but yes that is this system it's a terrible system it's specifically designed to compensate for their lack of an ability to make engaging long-term content that's all it is this is a crutch it's something developers hide behind when they have absolutely 
absolutely no idea how to keep people engaged until they do their next content drop. And for a game like this, I am very certain the content drop will be, I shouldn't say very certain, 85% certain that the content drop will either be all gold items so they can sell microtransactions and continue to make money off the game, or it will be pieces of eight. It'll be stuff that you have to buy with pieces of eight. It won't be silver-based. Either that, or it will be like they'll drop a new ship and the schematic for it costs silver and to build it costs silver, so it'll seem like it's that, but a bunch of the resources on there will be things that you have to buy with pieces of eight. Because even right now, for the last ship you can unlock in the game, one of the resource requirements for it is something that can only be purchased with pieces of eight at the black market. So I guarantee that's the way this game is going to go, and so this system is specifically designed to keep people playing even though it's got an extremely boring gameplay loop. Because if you don't, you can't possibly build up your pieces of eight. But yes, that's 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 my entire gripe for this system. It's so poorly designed. I think the best way to fix it is to make it so you don't have to pick up the pieces of eight. They either, either you go on the map and if they want, you can manually click it so that way they can still control that, you know, it only has, it can only store so much so you can't just let it build up over time or it just automatically deposits into your bank chest. That should be how it works. That's the thing that makes the most sense. And it's the only way that it actually gives you the illusion of being this kingpin and running this empire. Everything else, it just makes it feel like you're an entry-level pirate going on coffee runs. And that's just not entertaining. So that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.